the LA Clippers have successfully clinched a play-in berth, but they move down to sixth place. And with the biggest game of the season against the Lakers coming up on Wednesday, what did Ty Lue say about the way the Clippers are going to guard Anthony Davis? And is it the right decision? And also, is this the biggest Clipper-Laker game in the history of the Hallway series? And also, Marcus Morris back at practice? Going to be talking about it all on today's Locked On Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir. You are locking in with the clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day. Your team every day. I'm your host, Darren Viziri, in my 18th season as a Clipper fan. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dime Dropper. And Locked On Clippers is free and available on all your favorite podcasting platforms, including YouTube, where I want you to comment if you think this is the biggest Laker Clipper game in the history of the Hallway Series. And the Hallway Series obviously being coined due to the hallway that the Clippers and Lakers share at the Staples Center. But basically, let me make that broader because I guess that was only coined when the Clippers and Lakers shared Staples Center together. So in the history of the Lakers and Clippers being together in the same city. Is it the biggest game? Now, going to be talking about that, but also Marcus Morris Sr. back at practice. What Did he actually have COVID? Were the sources wrong that told me that he was just disappointed about the fact that he got taken out of the starting lineup? And Ty Lue says he's not going to double-team Anthony Davis. He's going to let Zoo guard him one-on-one. Is that the right thing to do? I'm going to be talking about all that in this episode And this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. It is never bad to admit that you need to talk to someone. It's really hard for a lot of people to admit that they could use therapy. And BetterHelp, there's no better therapy site than BetterHelp. And this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. But let's get into the Clippers. So as far as if this is the biggest Laker and Clipper game in the history of these two franchises being in the same city. Honestly, as someone who's really big into the history of the game, I'd have to say yes. Now, before I read off the candidates, I want to first explain the significance of this game. So with the Lakers win over the Utah Jazz on Tuesday night, they now, after starting 2-10, and have the same record as our Clippers, 41-38. and The Phoenix Suns, with the win over the San Antonio Spurs, have now successfully clinched the fourth seed in the Western Conference. So now we know who the top four seeds are going to be. I don't believe Denver has clinched the first seed yet, but the Nuggets, Grizzlies, and and Kings are going to be the top three seeds. The Kings cannot get the number one seed, though, so either the Grizzlies or the Nuggets will get the number one. Either the Kings or the Grizzlies will get the number two. And the Phoenix Suns will have number four. So the Clippers do not get home court advantage. Another thing I want you to comment on YouTube is, what do you think of that? That is obviously a massive disappointment for the Clippers. Coming into the season, you know, we knew it wasn't necessarily going to be a regular season team. But we expected a top four seed at the very least. Considering you won 42 games, you know, last season with 51 or yeah 51 games of no Paul George and 82 games of no Kawhi Leonard so to only to basically be rivaling that record or flirting with that record you know the Clippers with one more win would at least at bare minimum tie that record that they were 42 and 40 last season 41 and 38 going into this game on Wednesday so that's very embarrassing especially the fact that Kawhi Leonard has played over 50 games and Paul George definitely yeah now he won't end at 60 which is sad I was really hoping and maybe you can say I jinxed it all season long I was saying 
Well, it looks like Kawhi may get to 50. Paul George may get to 60. Kawhi Leonard has played 49. Wednesday will be his 50th game of the season, so it's going to be nice for him to at least hit that 50 games played mark. Paul George will end the season, the regular season, at 56 games played. So if you were to say that Paul George would miss 26 games and let's say Kawhi plays two more games, let's say he misses one of the back-to-backs, he misses 31, yeah, you could say the Clippers would probably end like maybe four or five, but flirting with playing territory is definitely a disappointment. And obviously with everything that's gone on with the Clippers, you know, things could have been avoided. Ty Lue hasn't had the best year. Uh, you know, bringing in Russell Westbrook in the middle of the season just showed things were just not where everybody wanted them to be from the beginning. And I don't need to make this an episode about the Clippers season. We've done enough of those. But as for this game's significance, so the Clippers now, thankfully, will be at bare minimum, at lowest, the ninth seed. So it is a good feeling. I still can't take it for granted that the Clippers will still be playing in some sort of postseason game. As a, as a longtime Clipper fan that saw seasons where the Clippers were absolutely atrocious, you know, despite how much we've complained this year, it's really nothing in terms of basketball quality compared to some of those seasons that Clipper fans have endured long before I became a fan and even when I was a fan in the late 2000s. But we will be playing a postseason game. So I'm really excited about that. And now, you know, the Clippers with the New Orleans Pelicans losing – and now having 39 losses, if the Clippers win these final three games, they ensure their playoff spot, not in the play-in. Because they have the tiebreaker over the Lakers, and that would mean that they finish 44 and 38, and the Pelicans, the best record they can get is 43 and 39. So the Clippers, if they win out, they are guaranteed a playoff spot, a top six spot, but the Clippers will not be getting home court advantage this year. This will be a first for me in the first round. Uh, actually, no, it's not. What am I saying? In 2012, the Clippers did not have home court advantage, and I attended game four. So it will be, you know, 2019 and 2012 are the only series in, you know, this Lob City and post-Lob City eras that the Clippers started the first round as the lower seed. Technically, in 2006, we were the lower seed, but we had home court advantage, and I was actually at game one against the Nuggets. But... The Clippers can ensure their safety if they win out. Now, this is why the game is so important. If the Lakers beat the Clippers, they will now have a better record than the Clippers. And now all they have to do is win those final two games. One is against Phoenix, who may rest. And the other one is against the Jazz, who will probably not be playing their best players at this point, trying to tank for more ping pong balls. So if the Lakers beat the Clippers, they have a really good chance to finish the season with those two wins. So this game is absolutely massive. And also, given the Lakers' losing streak against the Clippers, obviously not having beaten us since Ty Lue was hired as the head coach. So it seems like they're due. The vibes are a lot better over there right now. They seem far more connected. They're 7-1 and one in their last eight games. But the Clippers, they do get up for the Lakers and Kawhi Leonard and the Clips have lost two games in a row they've gotten three days of rest and the Lakers just played an overtime game shout out to the Utah Jazz making the Lakers work a little harder on Tuesday night than they expected to game went into OT came down to the last possession so the Lakers going to be traveling back to LA late on Tuesday night and will have a game against a rested Clipper team if the Clippers win, as I said, the odds of them getting that playoff spot are extremely high. They obviously own the tiebreaker with the over the Lakers, whether they win or lose on Wednesday night. But this is where it gets tricky. They don't own the tiebreaker against the Pelicans. So they got to make sure they don't end up with the same amount of losses as the Pels. And if they lose to the Lakers, they will have the same amount of losses as the Pels. And at that point, if the Pels just win their final two games, the Clippers are going to be in the play-in. So this is big as well for the Lakers. You know, if they win, as I said, they ensure that they can win out and control their own destiny. In my opinion, the other candidates for this best, you know, biggest Laker-Clipper game ever, number one, the 1992 final game of the regular season, the Clippers had clinched. I'm pretty sure that was our first playoff appearance 
in Los Angeles. The Clippers had already clinched. The Lakers, you know, that was the season that were in the beginning. Magic Johnson announced that he had HIV and retired. So it was like a Sedale three. Uh, I want to say Cedric. No, not I think that was before Cedric. Cedric Sabalos. All I remember is Sedale three that I know of was the man <laughs> for the Lakers. Byron Scott, I believe, was still on the team. Lakers had to win to get in the playoffs, and they did. But that game didn't really mean much for the Clippers at the time. I mean, I guess it would have been cool to keep the Lakers out of the playoffs, but at that point, it's like not a big deal, I bet, especially media-wise. And then Kawhi Leonard and Anthony Davis' debuts, that was an electric game. I mean, the buzz for that game was unlike any other for a Clipper-Laker game opening night. And there's been a lot of great opening night buzz for some Clipper-Laker games, but nothing like that Kawhi debut and AD debut with the Lakers. And then my third choice, my other candidate, would be the tie-breaking game in the 2011-12 lockout season, the first season with Lob City, where the Lakers and the Clippers were pretty close in the standings, and that was the third and final game they played with about a month left in the season. And, uh, man, we got torched by Andrew Bynum. It was crazy. That was peak Bynum. But, and then Kobe closed, you know, classic. But I would say this is the most important one. Honestly, but both teams have so much riding on it. And I guess this was what Adam Silver's intention was with this play-in game. And right now, it has made, out of all these three years that the play-in has been involved, because you can't really count the bubble year, because that was the first year it was introduced. But that was because, you know, the season had been cut down, and there was just a couple of games in the bubble. To You know, it was fair to do that. But after that, in full, you know, the 72-game 2021 season, and then... The last two seasons, 82-game seasons with plans. This season has been the most dramatic, no doubt about it. And coming up, speaking of drama, was there actually drama with Marcus Morris? Did he actually have COVID after all? Well, he was back in practice wearing a particular uniform that had some Clipper fans speculating on his status for tomorrow's game. Going to be talking about that coming up. But before I do that, I got to tell you about this. For a championship team... It's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride! Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. The Clippers with a big one. I'm really excited. And listen, I'm going to be watching the game from my couch. I cannot be out there getting heart attacks and popping blood vessels <laughs> in that game against the Lakers. There's going to be so many Laker fans, but I really hope my Clipper fans show out and make noise because, oh, man, if the Lakers win, I'm telling you, with all the losses the Lakers have had and, you know, some Clipper fans like to talk a lot. They are going to literally act like they won the championship if they win. And honestly, that's a testament to how far the Clippers have come as a franchise. For Laker fans to potentially be me even saying that they might do that, which they will, because I know Laker fans. They're going to go nuts and just make a bunch of jokes and be like, this has still always been our town, little guys. And It's just hilarious how they act sometimes, but it's a huge game. And Marcus Morris Sr., was reportedly back with the team, which makes me think, you know, you might be thinking, so you were full of it, huh? You were full of it saying that Marcus Morris may be done. Listen, I said in the video that I was confident about most things I was saying, but I clarified which things, and I'm referring to the episode where it was titled, What's Really Going On with the LA Clippers? And I talked about all the drama that I've heard about behind the scenes, kind of, and the weirdness with the lineup patterns and all that. And Marcus Morris, I heard, was disappointed about him being taken out of the starting lineup. He was out with an illness, and then in the middle of the game, Tomer Rizarli of Clutch Points, Clipper beat writer, released an article that Nico Batum was going to be taking his starting spot. And then conveniently, he's not going on the road trip and now is in health and safety protocols. Now look, if this was the beginning of COVID and you need a little bit of time for it to be detected or whatever, I understand, but nowadays you get those rapid tests you can get those rapid tests so fast, and it can tell if you have COVID. 
And also, I feel like it wasn't even talked about whether he could return at some point of the road trip. So, listen, I checked in again, even though there was a picture of him. He was back at practice, and the media, Ty Lue and everybody said he's back. They didn't talk about his health. They didn't say he's feeling better or anything like that. They just said he's back. And all the beat writers reported he's back. And I checked again with some people, and I said, was he actually sick? They were like, no, he was not. But listen, at this point, if you think he was sick, you can, because I have no proof. I really don't. But this is just hearsay. I don't believe he was, but here's the thing. I'm pretty sure I did say in that episode that he may be given some time to cool off. And that may have happened. And plus, here's what I think could have happened as well. With Eric Gordon out, I have a feeling, given that Marcus Morris was wearing the starting uniform in that picture, that tomorrow the Clippers are going to go big and start Marcus Morris, Nicholas Batum, and Kawhi Leonard alongside Westbrook and Zoo. And it's going to be like nothing ever happened, and now everything's good again. Just like with the Golden State game where an article was released by a beat writer, Marcus Morris missed a road trip, and then he came back like nothing happened, even though we heard a bunch of stuff was going on behind the scenes. Even somebody from the Clipper broadcast said there was ego involved, lining up to everything I'd said. And even after I did the last episode, I had somebody that's more in the know than me say I did a good job on it, which made me think that I was probably on the money with a lot of the things I did say. So I don't want you to think that I'm just BSing. But at the same time, maybe Marcus Morris was sick. But then more information came out today that he's questionable to play in the game with like lower back tightness. That is it. And it says that's a new injury for him. I mean, this just all seems so weird, so convenient. Like, I don't even know what to think. Lower back spasms. I'm sorry. That's a new injury for Morris. I mean, I don't know what to think anymore with this whole situation. I truly believe he wasn't hurt, uh, didn't have COVID. I truly believe that, that he just didn't travel the road trip. They gave him time to cool down. We will see what happens on Wednesday, whether he starts, whether he gets any minutes at all. It'll be very, very interesting. I don't even know what to think. I obviously don't want him to play. My wish would be that he sits on the bench and roots on his teammates just like they did for him. And that will make me think, if he does that, then maybe Ty Lue was right. Maybe he was all for it. But we shall see. I honestly don't know. I'm still not, you know, behind the scenes and all that. But we're going to have more clarity, I would believe, on Wednesday. But coming up, Ty Lue says the Clippers are not going to double-team Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis has been on an absolute tear lately. Is it the right decision? Going to be talking about that, but before I do that, the NBA playoffs are almost here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. My favorite bets of the week, look, after the back-to-back, I'm taking Clippers money line. Why not? I have a golden rule, never bet on the Clippers, but I'm feeling lucky on Wednesday night. Beating the Lakers, let's do it. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. And it's not just straight up who wins or loses. You can bet on player points, rebounds, assists. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right. Ty Lu says that the Clippers are not going to double-team AD. Now, I think there's going to be a little bit of mind games played here, or I should say there are mind games being played here, I believe, because I think Tyloo's going to switch up at some point and double AD. Now, I was just talking about it on my Dime Dropper Live on Tuesday night, uh, talking about the Lakers, that AD, I think, has gotten a lot better at passing out of the double team recently. That being said, I agree with Tyloo's decision, believe it or not. My only concern is, especially with the way the Lakers have been officiated lately, since their whole outrage after that Boston Celtics game where LeBron was on his knees complaining and looked like he was like about to cry, the Lakers have been getting a lot of calls. I don't have the stat in front of me, but I've been seeing so many stats about the whistle the Lakers have gotten since and the free throw attempts, especially with Austin Reeves. 
But Anthony Davis, all I'm concerned about is if Ivica Zubac gets in foul trouble. Because if Ivica Zubac gets in foul trouble, then we have Mason Plumlee coming in, who's been horrendous defensively. And LeBron attacking the rim, that concerns me. So if Zu can stay out of foul trouble, it'll be fine. My advice is to just let him shoot the mid-range. He's been doing a better job of going into the chest of his opposing, you know, the guy defending him and getting two feet in the paint and being aggressive. But I would say try to get him to shoot the outside shot because he can be really inconsistent with that, Anthony Davis. And, and Zubats is strong. If he tries to come into his chest, I believe Zu can still stand his ground and put up a good contest. Um, it's just that I, you don't want Zubats coming out too much pressuring him because then AD can get around him pretty easily. He's just so agile and good with the ball for his size. So that would be my advice. Let's see if he can make the jumper. If it starts getting bad, you'll start seeing the double. But I think Ty is going to be a little tricky. LeBron played a lot of minutes against Utah, so we'll see how he does. I don't think he's going to attack the basket as much. I think he's going to shoot a lot of jump shots. And the last time we saw him, he was hot from deep. But he didn't have – I don't think he had Anthony Davis in that game, if I recall correctly. So if LeBron, I think a lot of LeBron's performance on Wednesday is going to be if his jumper's falling or not. And the Clippers, you know, they need to attack him. And obviously when Malik Beasley's in, put him in the pick and roll as well. Anthony Davis has been on a tear defensively. So shots around the rim are going to be not the easiest. Hopefully Kawhi Leonard has a great mid-range game. And hopefully the other guys, the role players, the Terrence Manns, the Norman Powells, knock down their open threes. Because Anthony Davis is going to be a presence at the rim. When Anthony Davis is not in, I believe the Clippers should attack the basket a good amount. Norman Powell, I want to talk about him as well before I get to the main person that's going to be on the, under the microscope on Wednesday. But Norman Powell has been really forcing it since he came back. I hope Ty Lue starts with him on the bench. I think he's a lot more suited for that six-man role. Come in, Energizer Bunny. And I don't know what it is, but some guys just coming in in the middle of the first quarter just while the game has already been kick-started a bit, come in while guys are getting tired from the first unit and then players from the second unit, and they just take advantage of sometimes some lackadaisical defense, but also just being fresh, being ready. And Norman Powell has been that guy for the Clippers this season, and I think he's just got to let the game come to him a little bit more. Hopefully, we don't see many three-guard, or any, I should say, not many, any three guard lineups and i'm not counting terrence Mann when i say that but you know like a russ terrence norm i'm sorry a russ bones norm situation you know that cannot happen the lakers have gotten a lot bigger since they made those trades getting a rui hachimura getting a jared vanderbilt they really don't have a defensive liability in the lineup anymore besides maybe malik beasley everybody else can hold their own d has been holding his own lately Austin Reeves is a solid defender. Dennis Schroeder puts a lot of pressure on ball handlers. So it's not going to be easy at all. It's going to be the toughest game they've played against the Lakers in quite some time. And I think the Lakers are going to be pretty fired up. A big hope, though, is that they are fatigued from the game on Tuesday. Norman Powell, I'm hoping he can get a, get a good game for the Clippers, have a good game for the Clippers, have a good game for himself, and be efficient and take care of the ball. And speaking of taking care of the ball, there will be no bigger spotlight than the one that will be on one Russell Westbrook on Wednesday night playing against the Lakers for the first time. No doubt in my mind there's going to be a lot of jeers and boos when Russ gets the ball from the Laker contingent of the crowd. And I'm expecting about at least 55% Laker fans at Crypto.com Arena on Wednesday. And Russ, I mean... I have a feeling they're going to put AD on him to mess with him and invite him to the basket. And that is not a favorable matchup whatsoever because I don't think Russ is going to be able to get by Anthony Davis. And I don't think he is going to be able to finish over Anthony Davis. But what we can hope for is that he's hitting the mid-range. He's been hitting the jump shot better of late. But the thing was, when he misses, those Laker fans are going to cheer extra loud. And I hope that doesn't get in his head and make him play too hard. Ty Lue may have to protect Russ from himself in this game. But for the Clippers, the best thing they can do is hopefully get a lot of stops and get Russ in transition. When you get Russ in transition, getting assists, finishing on the break, that gives him confidence. And if Russ has a good defensive game, good rebounding game, that can also affect things overall. At the end of the day, 
the Clippers performance on Wednesday night, I think a lot of it's going to be predicated on how they start the game with the magical two words, defensive intensity. The Lakers just played and went into overtime in Utah. That's not an easy place to play. LeBron and AD have come off injuries this season. They played a lot of minutes. Clippers have been resting. They got to come out and hit them in the face. Throw the first punch. Let's get a double-digit lead after the first quarter. But that second quarter, it's been a tough one for the Clippers this season. But at least when you start, you know they'll probably be in the game and I would only assume that AD and LeBron would get more fatigued as the game went on than Clipper players. But we'll see. I'm hoping for a big Terrence Mann and Nico Atum game on Wednesday night, especially hitting the three ball. I think defensively they'll be fine, but they really need to stay out of foul trouble, especially Terrence, and knock down the three ball. Zubat staying out of foul trouble will be very pivotal as well. And we'll see if Marcus Morris plays. I'm so interested in that. If he starts Marcus Morris, oh man, we'll see. He might just play him because of the size. Lakers have a lot of size. And Marcus Morris, I will say this. I have to mention this. He is somewhat of a Laker killer since he's been a Clipper. Besides those first couple of games in the 2020 season, he's been fantastic against the Lakers. And last year, he had some big-time performances against them and some big shots late in games, including the bank shot on the Lakers floor in the first matchup of the season last year to clinch the game and beat the shot clock buzzer. Smoke has been the man against the Lakers with the Clipper uniform on. But we shall see. Besides the jumper, I would say Russ should get into some dribble handoffs as the screener if AD's guarding him. And if it's not AD, attack the basket. Be you. But we will see. Jared Vanderbilt will surely be on Kawhi Leonard. They'll probably hide LeBron on Nicholas Batum. And, but that would leave who on Zubats? Probably LeBron on Zubats, honestly, I would think. Austin Reeves can probably take Nicholas Batum. And then Dennis Schroeder will be on whoever the Clippers decide to start, whether it's Terrence Mann, Norman Powell, or Marcus Morris. We shall see. Biggest Laker Clipper game in the history of the Lakers and Clippers both being in L.A. together. Marcus Morris is back. I still believe that he wasn't sick. But I'm, as I said, you can believe it if you want because I have no proof. It's just what I've heard from people that I've considered reliable. And what I think makes sense with every weird story we've heard. So it'll be very interesting to see if he plays. Because the lower back spasm thing, it just sounds weird. But he's back. Maybe he cooled down. That's very possible as well. And... Last but not least, Ty Lu will not be doubling AD like we have in the past to start the game. So let's see how that goes. I honestly back the decision. Plus, part of it is because AD sometimes lacks aggression. And the Utah game the, uh, on Tuesday night was an example, but he was getting double teamed. But sometimes you need to shoot over the double. He's tall enough to do it, especially in lineups that LeBron's not in. But maybe that's just me. I think sometimes stars should shoot over doubles instead of passing it to guys who aren't making shots, but you can disagree with that. Remember to comment on today's pin question, is this the biggest Laker-Clipper game in the history of Lakers-Clippers being in LA? In your opinion, you let me know. Thanks for making Locked On Clippers your first listen today. Now make your second listen, Game to Game NBA. Every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NBA, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. Subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for more Clipper content. Make sure you're subscribed to Locked On Clippers and hit the notification bell. Maybe write a nice review for me on Apple Podcasts. Haven't had one of those in a while. Um, it would be nice to get some positivity in the air if you do enjoy the show. Shout out, by the way, I keep forgetting to shout this guy out, but shout out to one of the subscribers or fans of the show from the Philippines and all my international listeners. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you guys. The age old proverb continues. Go Clippers. My goodness, this one's going to be a doozy.